as we all grow and we all evolve, you know, there's there's new doors that open and there's new opportunities that open. And, and just by doing certain things, you realize, you know, if we did a couple of different changes here, we tweaked this or that, we could be impacting so many more people. Hello and welcome to The Daily Helping with Dr. Richard Schuster. Food for the brain, knowledge from the experts, tools to win at life. I'm your host, Dr. Richard. Whoever you are, wherever you're from, and whatever you do, this is the show that is going to help you become the best version of yourself. Each episode, you will hear from some of the most amazing, talented, and successful people on the planet who followed their passions and strive to help others. Join our movement to get a million people each day to commit acts of kindness for others. Together, we're going to make the world a better place. Are you ready? Because it's time for your daily helping. Thanks for tuning into the latest episode of the Daily Helping Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Richard, and I am delighted to invite back to the show Carrie Smolensky, the author of Living Life with Passion, Helping Others. He's a dynamic businessman, event producer, multifaceted entertainer, and entrepreneur from Chicago, Illinois. Kerry began his family of companies four decades ago while in high school and is constantly challenging himself to make a difference in the lives of others. He believes that change is the key to innovation and is constantly evolving both personally and professionally to continue to live his life with passion. His next endeavor is the second annual Passion Summit, which is May 6th through 7th, 2019. And that's the next logical step in continuing to share the ability to live life passionately while helping others. His goal of creating a passion community is just the beginning of being able to support each other while thriving personally and helping others achieve their dreams. Carrie, welcome back to the show. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be back. So it's amazing how quickly the time has passed since I've had you back on. And I know the Passion <laughs> Summit was a huge success. And we're going to talk a bit about that. But for those of you that missed that first episode and don't know a lot about you, talk to us about your background and how you became really passionate about helping others. Let's start there. All right. Well, it's something I've always been involved in and whether it was, you know, growing up as a kid and being involved in charitable drives and local communities or um, through college uh, with the JUF and the UJA and uh, campaigns. We, you know, we, we did a lot of different things to raise money for those less fortunate. And after I was married, a uh, very uh, couple years after our, our kids were, uh, were born, we took a trip in the city and we were at a Bulls game. It was their first Bulls game. And they were both really young and we were coming back home and we decided to drive through an area where the homeless community lived in Chicago. And, you know, we've always been very transparent with our, our kids in uh, showing them what the real world looks like and not to take anything for granted. And um, that the only way to achieve things are by hard work and, you know, those types of values. And they saw people living in the streets. They saw people living in cardboard boxes. And at a young age, they wanted to know what they could do to help. So by example, they actually started what is now a warmer winter. But back then it was really a homegrown, organically based initiative that was us and some friends and their kids. And we made peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in our kitchen and uh, the kids decorated bags and we added fruit and we had juice boxes and we had uh, supplies. And that has turned into what started in driving out and finding where these people lived and physically, personally giving it to them along with hugs and gratitude and just sharing a human bond, that's transformed into uh, this past weekend when, uh, again, we, uh, we delivered food and, and clothing and toiletries and hugs and hot chocolate to the homeless community in Chicago. So uh, it's really come a long way, but that's the giving back has always been a part of my life. It's been a part of our family. And, you know, through the years, I've been on, on various boards of charities to make a difference, um, cancer research. You know, one of my, my daughter's friends growing up, uh, Stephen Newkirk, passed away at a very young age uh, from neuroblastoma cancer, from can neuroblastoma cancer. 
And uh, Friends for Stephen was an organization that I was involved in to benefit the research. And that, that, was, that was one of one of many organizations which led to uh, my involvement in Front Row Foundation, which is now over 13 plus years uh, since its inception. And recently uh, this year took a uh, recipient to a, uh, another Front Row experience at Monday Night Raw for uh, WWE. So it, it, it really covers so many different facets. And I know there's so many people in your listening audience that all do something to give back, whether it's community, whether it's in, in religious groups, whether it's uh, something that um, they're donating monetary funds or they're doing things just to make a difference in the lives of others. And whatever it is, the little ripples that we each make, make bigger ripples and really pass on goodwill and attitude and positivity and uh, affect a lot of people's lives. I love everything that you just said, Carrie. And, and we will, for those of you listening, don't grab your pen. So all of these organizations, Front Row Foundation, uh, Friends of Stephen, everything that Carrie has mentioned, we're going to have links to those in the show notes that you, so you can donate to those if you so choose. But something you said that really struck me is that this was something that you were doing with your children who are young and they're grown and that you know, this was always a part of you. So is this something that you did with when you were a kid that your parents instilled in you? It was. And, um, you know, whether it was through synagogue youth group, whether it was um, a Thanksgiving, you know, um, we always helped uh, feed the homeless. That was something I did later in, in life as an adult. But growing up, it was more or less uh, clothing and, fun, and clothing drives and, and things like that. But as we all grow and we all evolve, you know, there's there's new doors that open and there's new opportunities that open. And, and just by doing certain things, you realize, you know, if we did a couple of different changes here, we tweak this or that, we could be impacting so many more people. And then that's really the uh, the cool thing about it. And and to jump over to the Passion Summit for a moment, that has also become a vehicle to inspire and inform and enlighten people to the ways of helping others and making a difference in our world. So, um, you know, everything comes full circle and, you know, we all have these stories growing up and they evolve into other stories and even sometimes traditions, which is a, uh, a really cool uh, aspect as well. And the last piece is why I asked you the question, because a lot of times I've heard parents ask the question, well, how do I, in this era of Facebook and Snapchat and everyone's on a device. How do you instill in young people that commitment to humanity, to to giving back? And one of the things you just said was make it a tradition. And leading by example. I think anything, you know, so many people think, you know, how do I teach my kids to be ethical people? And then the parents go ahead and they're, you know, cheating on their taxes or they're cheating in in something else. And well, if you want to teach be the example, be the light. And and it's not that difficult to teach if you're the role model. And um, I think that's true to anything. I think it's true to you know being the type of person that you are and, and keeping your ethics and, and the way that you deal with things in an honorable fashion, even when no one's looking. So I, I think that speaks to a lot of things. And if you're that kind of a mindset and if you have that belief in who you want to be. And I think giving and helping others really becomes the next natural step. I love that. And you said that the Passion Summit, so we've had one on the books and it was a huge success. And we've got another one coming up in May. Talk to us, uh, for those that aren't familiar with the Passion Summit, talk to us about the Passion Summit and, and, and really specifically, what were the things that evolved out of it last year that were expected and the things that were unexpected? That's a great question because I've been, aside from producing events for 40 years and entertaining and doing that, I've specifically been in the motivational and the inspirational space for at least 25 years. And this was really a coming of age after I wrote my book and uh, published it in December 2015. It was really time to take it to the next level and create a community. And my original goals were to create a community based on like-minded people who have passion for living their lives and, and wanting more out of life. Also, 
having a desire to give back, help people make a difference in the world. And I'm thrilled with what happened at the Passion Summit. I'm thrilled with the experience. We had amazing speakers. We had amazing people. We had 135 people attend and 60% of them flew in from out of town. So for the first one, uh, that was that was that was awesome, and I'm looking to at least double or triple those numbers uh, for this next one coming up. And um, on a side note, for your listeners, we have a special code called Daily Helping, all one word, Daily Helping, and that takes four hundred and fifty dollars off the price of uh, the nine ninety seven retail. So, um, you know, it's about half off on the uh, on the discount code. So that's something that the people that were there, I knew what to expect. What I didn't expect was the impact. I expected it to impact people. But now, for the people that are coming back, and I'm hearing stories of how it changed their lives, of how they are now working with you know, Alex, my, my trainer, who uh, has changed their lives. Someone, someone lost 80 pounds, and, and another person has been involved in uh, LEAF training, which uh, Flourishing Leadership Institute is an organization that we support on the audiovisual side and, and production side. And they, facil- they train facilitators in appreciative inquiry. And you know, without deviating too much, this person became involved in the uh, training of appreciative inquiry and has a whole new direction in life. And, and it's, it's really awesome to hear the stories of the impact and the accountability partners that were created and the new friendships and bonds. And a number of our speakers have now been on other stages as a result. And it's really just great to see something come full circle and deliver more benefit to the attendees and to the speakers than I ever really thought possible. You know, we knew it was going to be a great event. We knew people would get a lot of out of it, but it's it's really gratifying and just puts more fuel in the fire to make it bigger and better, and uh, you know, keep expanding it. And um, I'm excited about it. Anything new and exciting? Well, of course, there will be. But <laughs> no, 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 no. So there's always going to be. I'm glad you mentioned that because there's always going to be something new and exciting. We had amazing speakers in in the 2018 Passion Summit. And again, we're going to have amazing speakers in the 2019 Passion Summit. And what is going to be the consistency of all of these events that I'm producing is that the content is going to be off the charts. The experience is going to be off the charts, but it's going to constantly evolve. Uh, yes, we're always going to have some kind of a costume networking party that was epic. And uh, and I, I say that because we, we kept people together for two days. It's a Monday, Tuesday. And aside from being within the main constructs of the Passion Summit for Monday and Tuesday, Monday night, we had the costume networking party for people to expand the networking and, and communications and, and just have fun with each other. But even during lunch on both days, no one had to leave the hotel. We were in an area we called the Passion Village, where there were tools and products and services and other ways to network and engage with each other. So that's going to expand. The opportunities for the attendees are going to expand, and um, it's uh, it's always going to evolve. You know, and and one of the things that is important is giving back. And we incorporated a warmer winter front row foundation and also uh, Angel Wings. Um, international. And uh, for your listeners, Angel Wings International has created a hospital in uh, Jacmel, uh, Haiti. And uh, my friends, uh, Carl Drew and Andy Janti are, you know, epically involved in, in that. Uh, John Vroman from Front Row Foundation spoke about giving and talked about, um, you know, the what we do in the front row. And, and in a warmer winter is where we have a local initiative like we did this past weekend, where we deliver clothing and food and hugs and hot chocolate to, you know, Chicago lands, homeless community. And, and we shared these experiences with the attendees in unique ways. And we're always going to keep developing that. So there will be more and more excitement because you never know what to expect. We're going to have surprise speakers. We're going to have elements of, of music to always engage and, and excite. So, uh, you know, there's certain things we don't publicize on the website, but um, there's always more speakers than we promote as well. 
For those who can't attend, is there any way that they can stream the speakers? There is. And um, we are we, we have a YouTube channel of the Passion Summit. So there are videos of the speakers on the Passion Summit. But, you know, there's a whole difference between watching something off of YouTube and, and hearing a message as opposed to being in a live experience and not only experiencing the message with like-minded people, but everything else that's involved in the engagement in those two days where you're completely disconnected from everything else and you're focused on improving your, yourself, becoming your, the best version of yourself, uh, tackling problems that you you struggle with internally that we all do, that we never have time. We're, we're always busy, especially people that are helping others. We're busy helping others and we're not focusing on helping ourselves to be a better version of ourselves to help others. So although the videos are informative and you know they're, they're definitely full of content and they're great, nothing really matches the experience and the opportunities of engaging with everyone that's there. We'll be right back to our interview after this. Hey, Daily Helping listeners, Dr. Richard here, and I am so excited to share with you something that we've been working on for the past 18 months. Introducing Personal Helping, which we created because everybody struggles with something. Want to lose weight, improve your relationships, or overcome long-standing obstacles? Then you need Personal Helping to smash your goals. Personal Helping utilizes a system developed by myself and my team of behavioral science experts, which incorporates the principles of neuroscience as well as technology. While Personal Helping is not therapy or medical advice, our Personal Helpers provide a unique perspective and accountability which can reinvigorate your life. Personal Helping sessions are conducted in real time via video conference on your smartphone, tablet, or computer. Go to the dailyhelping.com and then the personal helping section where you can download the Daily Helping app and sign up for your first session today. And now, back to the show. Where do you see the Passion Summit in five years, 10 years? I see it constantly evolving. I see it growing. I, I would assume that at one point we are going to cap the amount of people that are in attendance. And I say that because I recently attended this year, uh, Tony Robbins, UPW, um, Unleash the Power Within. And there, me along with, I don't know, 10 or 15,000 people were at the United Center. I was fortunate to have been there as a guest because uh, Tony Robbins extended a discount as well to people that would attend the Passion Summit and, and vice versa. But Looking at the crowd, although there's this amazing energy and it's an amazing experience, I think there's a value in keeping the numbers right now under 500. You know, that's that to me is still an intimate setting. Now, five years from now, I may change my mind in the sense of having multiple events like this more than just once a year, but. For right now, the way I'm looking at it and the experience that we want people to have and what we want people to come away with and, and connect with people is a little bit more challenging with the larger numbers um, above 500. And uh, we really always want to deliver the best value possible. And I think another possibility is having a number of these throughout the year. So that's, that's where we are at the moment. Awesome. And, and I know you mentioned the, the theme of giving back and helping others has been consistent, not only in our chat, but in everything that you do throughout your life. I'm wondering, you mentioned a couple of stories like your coach, Alex, was able to help somebody lose quite a bit of weight. Is there any one story that stood out for you that just really shook you and said, wow, this is, this is absolutely what it's all about? There's hundreds. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll preface the story I'm about to share with you, which was actually from my honeymoon 30 years ago with my wife. But, you know, if you are aware and if you are being present and you're in the moment, and these are all tools that you can carry with you and with practice, it just becomes natural. But if you never think about it, you don't go in this direction. 
you know, if you're aware of your surroundings, you're always aware of what's happening. You're aware of someone sneaking up behind you. You're aware of someone in need. You're aware of someone living out of a cardboard box and you're not just ignoring it. It's, it's an awareness beyond yourself. And so many of us are stuck in our phones and stuck in our tablets and we're, we're living a virtual life, communicating with friends that uh, we may never see in life and uh, neglecting uh, the friends that we really have in real life and family. And um, I think that if you are cognizant, fully aware of everything you're surrounding, then there will be more opportunities for you to make a difference in other people's lives. Um, you might, if you're living in a cold climate, start uh, you know, keeping warm knit hats in your back seat. And when you're coming off an expressway or keep bottles of water, when you come off an expressway and uh, there's a homeless uh, person that is there or trying to wash a windshield or trying to beg for money, uh, you can actually give them something of value that's going to impact their lives and help them. And that kind of leads me to an awareness where when I was, I was in Mexico with my wife on our honeymoon and we were at a beautiful resort and um, my, my wife's back was towards where the deep end was and I was facing that area. And there were a lot of people in the pool and um, I tend to be aware of things. And uh, as I'm talking to my wife, there's a older gentleman that I noticed, you know, kind of over her shoulder, maybe 20 feet behind. And, um, you know, I turn and I, uh, I look back at my wife and that older gentleman is no longer there. And I, I glance, you know, left and right. And for the time I looked away, my thought is, okay, there's no way he would have swam somewhere else and isn't, isn't in the pool. And, um, I dove underwater and he was underwater. The deep end of the pool had a slope where he must have um, just slid. In other words, it, it was a, a walking slope. So he was under and couldn't get up. And I, uh, um, I went down and luckily, you know, I, I grew up, I, I've had all kinds of training. Lifeguard was, was one of them. So uh, I brought him up and then all of a sudden uh, there were a few other people that noticed what I was doing and they came to the side. And then there were a number of people that helped pull him out when I lifted him up. But things can, can change in a moment. You know, whether it's a, a car accident, whether, you know, it's someone, again, you know, my pet peeve is what people do with their phones and while they're driving or anything else is, is looking down for, for something that you place as an importance, but it really has no importance. The real importance is you focusing on what you're doing at the moment 100%. And whether that's engaged in a conversation with someone and not disrespecting them by going to your phone or looking around in the room to see who else might be more important or advantageous for you to talk to. You know, there's, there's something important about that. And, and there's somebody for those people in uh, uh, the vector marketing Cutco world, the most amazing knives on this planet, <laughs> that I've been uh, fortunate to have them as a client for about 30 years now. Uh, there's one of the presidents, uh, Bruce Goodman, is known by any, anyone that you speak to that has had a conversation with Bruce will tell you that he engages 150%. Even if there could be a long lost relative off to the side, his eye contact is not leaving you while you're in that conversation. And, um, you know, the impact is absolutely tremendous. So, you know, when people deviate and want to multitask and do other things, they're not doing what the task is at 100% and accidents will happen or carelessness will happen, whether they hurt themselves, whether they hurt others. And, you know, you, as a human being, you have to be responsible for your actions and have enough respect for yourself and everyone else that you need to be doing the right thing. So, you know, awareness is one aspect where, you know, you're aware of other people and it, it's not a question of walking by because you don't want to be bothered or you don't want to be seen associating or you don't want to contribute to someone who you don't believe in their methods of what they're doing, but you don't know their story. 
And regardless of passing judgment on someone else, if someone is less fortunate than you, I guarantee there's a way that you can help them in a respectful way, in a way that's congruent with your own religious, philosophical, humanistic beliefs, and just do the right thing, you know, and and, and that's something that I think is so lost. And that ties into everything. It ties into how we raise our children. It ties into how we run a business or what we do. Because at the end of the day, you know, your word is your bond and, and it's your reputation and it's, it's how you live your life. And, and those actions are perceived not just once or twice, but every moment, you know, for the person who just met you, that's how they know you. And, and, and one other thing about that is, you know, so many times we grow up in life and we make judgments on people, people from our past, because we remember them a certain way. And uh, John Vroman, a very good friend of mine and the co-founder of the Front Row Foundation, talks about this in a lot of his presentations, where we remember people how they were and not necessarily how they are. And sometimes we treat them that way. You know, our, our kids might be grown, but we may remember how they used to be and we don't appreciate how they've grown. And, and you and I know we're all, we're different people each day. We keep evolving. So when you think about that person in high school who you didn't like for whatever reason, you know, right now they're a different person. So if you meet them or see them again, keep those judgments to yourself and look at them as if you just met them for the first time. And I think all of these concepts come together in a way to be the best version of yourself, in a way to help others along the way, and in a way to set an example for those closest to us, whether they're family, whether they're friends, or whether there's their colleagues or uh, people you know, that are coworkers. Kara, there were so many nuggets of wisdom in there. So thank you for sharing all of that. That's another way of saying I've been rambling. But I pre- <laughs> <laughs> one, one man's rambling is another man's you know, genius lesson. So uh, we'll, we'll choose to look at the letter. Really quick, the, the, the guy in Mexico, you, I, don't, I think we missed the, uh, the end. Like, you got him out and he was okay, right? That was the point, I think. <laughs> he was, the funny, yeah, he was okay, but... It, it was funny. All of a sudden, um, you know, there were a lot of people around him. And then, you know, we, uh, we went on our own way and uh, enjoyed the rest of our honeymoon and, and never actually saw him again throughout that time frame. But yes, yes, he was okay. Very, very cool. I want to transition and spend a couple of minutes. You've alluded to it on a couple of instances, but I know this is a cause that is so near and dear to you. Take a couple moments and talk to us about what a warmer winter is going to be doing in the near future and how people can get involved with that? We'd love to. Um, as I mentioned, a warmer winter started as an initiative that we've done uh, as a family, and then it evolved into our family of companies being our main charitable event. And our, our, our family of companies from Kerry Smolensky Productions, from Custom Specialty Promotions, Mobile Music, Interactive Entertainment, we, we do all of these different aspects from entertainment, promotional products, and event planning and production. And that was something that we created for, we brought it into our company as something that we could all be involved in a way of helping others and expand from what we did as a family to what we're doing within our business. And um, each year, throughout the year, we collect and our, our main headquarters has always been a drop-off point for people. And uh, people drop things off uh, literally up until last week. I mean, it was really up until a couple of days before we, we, we do our, our, our give back on, on the third Saturday in December. You know, it's, it's, it's always, it's, it depends, it's second or third Saturday, depending on, on the year. But, it, but it's always uh, the Friday night before where we create the, uh, the food bags and we separate the clothing. So A Warmer Winter is on Facebook as Warmer Winter. It's um, online, awarmerwinter.com. And um, there's ways to just reach out to us to help either donating supplies or, or clothing or, um, or helping either in what we're doing on Friday night or helping in distributing on, on Saturday. You know, we have a number of businesses that are local that give us crates. We also, uh, aside from the, the meal bags that we create, 
There's also uh, toiletries and personal bags that we we also create. There was a Girl Scout troop that created 50 bags and, and donated that to us. So there's so many ways, but you can reach out to me directly, Carrie at CSPWorldwide.com. And um, you know, I'm sure it's all in the notes, but there's uh, many, many ways to help in, in that. And we're just really fortunate for the amount of people that have participated. Um, we're fortunate for the difference we're able to make, even a small difference, because uh, we could be doing this every single day of the year and not make enough of an impact. But uh, we try to do what we can, and um, it keeps growing every year. So uh, you know, it's just sharing in doing something during a time that's the coldest time here in Chicago, and uh, and people are constantly being forced out of certain areas by the city. The city keeps uh, fencing off areas, and uh, there's less and less places for them to go. So a lot of times we'll not only look at where they're living on the streets or under viaducts, but uh, there's a number of shelters we go to as well. So um, just however people can make a difference. And even if you don't donate or help us directly, you know, if you're in a cold climate, you know, keep some warm clothing, keep some bottles of water in your car. And as you drive around, you're going to see people. And if you just notice and be a little bit more aware, you're going to realize there's a whole lot more than you thought there were. And if you're in a warm climate, you know, you know the needs of what people have. They're just basic human needs, you know, just, just to, to be the best version of yourself and help people in whatever speaks to you, you know, whatever resonates to you is the best way to do it. And, um, and there's no judgment on it because every, just like the starfish story, every one good deed makes a difference. It may not make a difference in an entire village, but it'll make a difference in that one person. Well said. Well said. Carrie, we're at time and, and I enjoyed this conversation so much. As you know, I wrap up every episode by asking my guest one question, and that is, what is your biggest helping, the single most important piece of information you'd love for somebody to walk away with after hearing our conversation today? I really think that to be the best version of yourself is extremely important to be aware and to be present. You know, those types of things can make a difference. You know, we're living in a, a world where you never know what can happen next to you. I think awareness and, um, and just your own self-awareness of you and your surroundings will not only help you, but help those around you. And, and really just to be present and, uh, and enjoy every moment. You know, I know there's people who run back and forth to work without even noticing a sunrise or a sunset. There's so much to experience in this life that the takeaway would be to be present in whatever you're doing, to experience as much as you can, and live life with passion uh, with your, your family, with your friends, and everything you do, and always help others. Perfect. So well said. I know, I know you gave your email address a couple of moments ago, but lay out those URLs where people can find out more about the Passion Summit and these various other things you're working on. Absolutely. You can find everything about me at kerrysmolensky.com and uh, thepassionsummit.com is uh, everything about the Passion Summit. Awarmerwinter.com is about a warmer winter. Uh, frontrowfoundation.org talks about Front Row Foundation. We have a few with Angel Wings, but Angel Wings International is um, the main organization that takes care of the um, hospital in Jacamel, Haiti. And if you uh, Google that, uh, there's all types of ways to, to help there. And uh, we share all that at the Passion Summit every year as well. So uh, pleasure being on your show again. And again, for your listeners, daily helping, all one word, takes $450 off of the ticket price of the Passion Summit. Fantastic. And again, we will have everything Carrie just mentioned in the show notes, as well as in the Daily Helping app. So we've got you covered every way. But again, Carrie, loved having you on again. We'll have to do this every year, I think, in, in one way, shape or another. It's just well, appreciate it. And uh, I want to also thank everybody who tuned in to listen to this episode today. If you like what you heard, go out there and subscribe to the show because this is what helps other people find it and allows them to help other people as well. But most importantly, go out there today and do something nice for somebody else, even if you don't know who they are, and post it in your feeds using the hashtag MyDailyHelping because the happiest people are those that help others. <laughs>